Hello, this is Healer, an Akashic Records expert, and I'm going to be your host for the Shine Your Light Summit. We are talking about steps and strategies that you can use to clear your blocks, awaken to your purpose, and manifest the life of your dreams. I'm here with Lisa Transcendence Brown, who's from AwakeningToRemembering.com. And the reason why I asked Lisa to join us is because Lisa has some really great strategies around clearing blocks and awakening to your purpose and also manifesting the life of your dreams. To tell you a little bit about Lisa, Lisa Transcendence Brown is a globally recognized ascended master, multidimensional consciousness way shower, author, transformational speaker, and she's here to assist with global consciousness, awakening to remembering, physical ascension, and the embodiment of pure, divine, powerful essence light. She shares ancient knowledge and navigational tools to empower others in reclaiming their own mastery as pure love and light source energy here. She has some really cool strategies around the light body and of course, awakening to remembering, remembering who you are. And I'm excited to share it with you today and have Lisa go into that over the next 30 minutes or so. So, Lisa, I'd like for you to share a little bit about yourself and why this topic, Shine Your Light, is important to you. Oh, hi. Um, thank you so very much, and aloha. Um, well, me, that could be a really long or short uh, topic. Um, but basically, I was... Um, full-blown human that it was time for me to wake up. I had no awareness of ascension or awakening. Um, deeply embroiled in the physical world, not knowing any better. Um, wow, my I'm surprised. physical world was <laughs> the only thing I understood. Uh, full-blown full blown left brain, logical, um, computers, um, accounting, finance, uh, everything, wow. left brain. And um, then the universe said, okay, you, you've been human long enough. You deeply embroiled yourself in the experience, and now it's time to turn your whole world upside down um, so that you can wake up and realize that none of anything you've done thus far has anything to do with who you are. And now it's time, yeah, to let go of all of your identities, everything physical that you attached to everything that you thought was important and let's show you because this is how it works but this is my mm -hmm. story let's show you wow. how things really work and it's not what you thought it was and so the, the thing about it is is that absolutely everybody here on earth is here to wake up everybody here is to become fully conscious again everybody here is to go through the ascension process but um, our awareness of what this is um, isn't always there. So I mm -hmm. fell backwards into a world that didn't make any logical sense, and I was a very logical person. Everything had to make sense. Um, <laughs> That's surprising. <laughs> yeah, I know. So um, I – but, you know, what's cool is that when it's time to wake up, everything gets really confusing. Um, and we don't understand it's time for all of our stuff that was hidden, everything we suppressed, everything we pushed inside, everything we we didn't want to see, it's all coming up. And we don't understand that's the point. We don't understand that it's our time to wake up to beauty and magnificence and magic and amazing things. Um, and so we fight and we struggle and we hang on because we have fear or we're scared what happens to me if things change, what happens to me if I lose those things. Um, so I had to fall backwards um, and go through the entire process of immense suffering uh, because that was the journey I chose. And I had to bring all the walls down. I had to uh, learn to trust where I didn't have any. Um, and start to understand that that there was so much more to everything, um, but I had to open my eyes. I had to open my heart. I had to open up, and I had to stop trying to fit things into the little boxes and try to make them all make sense. And because knowledge is different here, knowledge is through our heart. 
knowledge um, and so being a very left brain logical person, I was extremely highly intellectual, if you will. I believe but that. yet it's the other type of intellectual is the one that we pride ourselves on because um, we've gathered all this knowledge. Um, and what happens is when we start to wake up, we start to open up. And when our consciousness expands, um, our memory starts to go. Our ability to function the old ways goes. Um, our m memories and everything that we thought we knew completely goes out the window. And so we have to learn how to function all over again. We sleep a whole lot. Our body goes haywire uh, while it's going through this upgrade process, which is an, an immensely huge, intricate process that okay. can be very simple. But we're human, and we like to complicate everything. We want That's true. We want the answers that, that make logical sense. We don't want to listen to the things that um, don't fit into our way of thinking or doing things. And okay. unfortunately, if you will, but not really, because you're going to, we all come to understand that um, everything happens exactly as it's meant to be. And so every experience yeah, that, that we have occurs for a reason. Uh, the cool thing is that if we open up and start to really pay attention, and really want to know and start asking the questions that make a difference instead of the ones that fed the old ways. Um, there's a magnificent explanation for everything, but it won't conform to anything that we thought we knew. It is going to completely challenge us in every way, and that's kind of the point. Could you so, give me an example of that? Well, um, one is that uh, duality is the battle between the head and the heart. And every one of us mm -hmm. came here to experience a, a journey uh, of duality in order to transcend that and come back to unity and, and unification inside, which means that everything we, our head used to tell us, we have to stop listening to our head um, and letting it run the show. And we have to open our mm -hmm. heart and we have to listen to our head to see what it says. And so, so we have to open our heart and then listen to our head. Mm -hmm. Because when you're when you're in your heart space and you're just sense. observing and listening to the words mm -hmm. that are running through your head or listening to the feelings you're having or mm -hmm. paying attention to what's going on with you, you start to realize, wow, there's all these things going on inside of me I never really understood or knew. That's true. As, as humans, we don't want to face those things because we have judgments about them. We think that we're less, we're not good enough, we don't have enough, or this is right, or this is wrong. And that's all a polarity, duality game that we came here to transcend. So when you're in your heart space, when your heart is fully open, truly, because there are a lot of people walking around in their heart, but their minds are closed. And so we have to get the mind open because... What happens is if we're not listening to what's going on inside of us, then we're running on autopilot and programs that are running our world, that are determining what's going to happen, quote, to us, um, okay. not understanding that all of those things are happening for us, trying to get us to wake up. Waking up means your heart's opening, your mind's opening, you're relaxing, and you're starting to remember things from a different place, which is insight with your entire being and the way you feel. And, but the example, uh, when we feel discomfort uh, mm -hmm. as a human, and I speak human and higher self, I speak human and soul, I speak human, I speak in, in, in versions and aspects because technically there's multiple versions and aspects of us um, more than we even comprehend or know. Uh, when mm -hmm. we can start to understand which aspect of us is present at any given time, we can tar start to see what's going on with us, and, and we can shift vibrationally. And when we shift vibrationally, our whole reality changes. So it, it's true. paying attention to everything. It's being constantly aware. It's being so um, aware and conscious in the moment that not one thing occurs that you're not aware of. Um that you, we start to realize that everything is ours 
Everything occurs in response to a vibration we hold inside our body, a cellular program that is somewhere in our bones, in our skin, in our teeth, and we're going through this upgrade process. And what's occurring is that everybody's got to go through a purification process. And that purification process is cleansing and purifying and detoxing us of all the old belief systems and ways. But it was anchored in the physical body. And as we activate all this light, it activates inside the body, um, i.e. the light body. And as we activate light, it, I'm going to start speaking in very simple ways. Mm, I simplify, mm-hmm. if you will. So as we mm-hmm. activate, as our heart opens, it activates our light. And so where our heart's not open, something has to occur to get our heart open. And so a lot of people say, well, I don't understand why that happened to me. Well, things happen to get us to wake up. Things happen to get our attention. Things happen to get us to focus. Things happen so that to focus. Things happen so that we'll, un- we'll do something different than what we were doing before. And it takes actual physical experiences because we're stubborn and we don't want to hear, feel, see, listen. We don't want to honor what's going on with us. We want to go to every other excuse in the book. Mm-hmm. So this is more about when you feel um, discomfort. Then your body, your higher self aspect, um, your, your, your conscious you, Uh, is trying to tell you that something's off. It's trying to tell you you've avoided something. It's trying to tell you there's something you don't like. But instead, we feel the discomfort, and we try to hide from something, and we try to push it back inside, and we don't want to listen to it. And this is about listening to everything. Um, Because here, we become energy again. And as we become conscious energy, everything makes sense. We see, we hear, see, feel everything energetically. We hear, see, feel everything um, differently. We see in geometric shapes. We see in holographic, we see in holograms. Uh, We see vibrationally. We hear vibrationally. So when somebody talks to me, I don't hear the words. I hear the tones and the sounds. I hear the lack and the fear. I hear the blame, shame, guilt. I I hear the truth beneath the words. Mm -hmm. of what's embedded in that person's consciousness. And and we all have these capabilities. They're a part of our uh, gifts that that come forth as we re-evolve or evolve back into who we are. And this is an evolutionary process. Um, We're evolving. Um, And we evolve from carbon-based humans into crystalline uh, light body structures. And everything changes. Uh, Our body has to release all the density and the old programs and the separation so that everybody can return to peace, love, purity, um, inner power, inner strength, all of these things that that we agreed and chose to come here to experience in order to turn around and transcend and let it all go. And that's a hard thing for a human aspect to go, well, why did I have all these experiences if I'm supposed to let them all go? Um, and so we don't under we don't quite understand at the time. Mm-hmm. And so what starts to happen is is as we expand our consciousness, as we um, raise our vibrational frequency, as we choose to see from a different perspective, we start to see and puzzle pieces start to tie together. And, and things start to make sense. And it's in a very different way than it was before. It's through observation. It's through feeling. Um, it's through connecting. That we, we speak a lot in metaphors because you can find um, truth in, in metaphorically in a lot of things as they occur. Everything has a message in it. And, and the cool part is as we return to um, – expanded consciousness and, and our multidimensionality here as we return to mastery and, and alchemic um, alchemy um, we start to understand everything in such a different way that our whole way of functioning changes what we allow in our world changes what we participate in changes where we put our energy changes all the lack goes and it's replaced with abundance um, because we remember fully what we forgot, and it comes through 
and activation of consciousness. A lot of people remember when they sleep. Some remember when they're out in nature. And what happens um, is that we have access to multiple dimensions, um, but we have to go inside in order to activate and, and, and to participate and navigate um, with ease. Otherwise, we're totally oblivious and we're being pulled through the ringer. And, and, and it's, it's the perception of suffering and it's harsh um, because it's trying, the process is we have to wake up. And so whatever it takes to get us to wake up is what will occur. So the more stubborn and the more closed off we are, the more we require to occur in our world, if you will. So I'm going to stop for a moment. <laughs> so, so the more stubborn you are, mm -hmm. do you think it's harder for them? Like, do you think the universe has to act more Well, make it harder? One thing to come to to understand, well, let's look at it this way. It's not the universe, it's our universe. We are the universe. Mm -hmm. Our higher self aspects are us. Right. So that when we're not listening, our universe that is us understands what it takes to get our attention. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow, okay, she doesn't want to listen. Let's Let's do it just a different way this time. Wow, she doesn't want Negative to listen. Way. We've already had 4,000 <laughs> options here. Let, let's remove something just a bit. Oh, that wasn't harsh enough because one, one day I was working and the words are, uh, the words were, um, have you experienced enough to get your attention? No, here, let's give you a little bit more. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. And, and what's funny is when we really start to embrace the journey, it becomes a lot of fun. Um, it doesn't have to be so harsh and so hard. Uh, the reason it is is because we won't open up and we won't listen. We want it our way. Um, we don't like change. Um, no. We perceive <laughs> that we're losing something, and we don't understand that what we're not losing something. We're gaining knowledge and new understanding so that we can bring forth more abundance, more unity, more love, more than we can even conceive. This is a magnificent, magnificent journey, but not in the beginning because we don't want to hear. We don't want to listen. We don't want to open up. And that's because uh, we're not open to change. Now, as we come to remember, we start to shift from one vibration to the next. We start to embody higher light consciousness in our physical structure and our physical body starts to change too. This is a complete overhaul of our entire reality and physical body systems. And human aspects, our human aspects is, oh no, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And so the reason I do what I do is so that it doesn't have to be so harsh. We can actually embrace the journey and what I share are understandings and ancient knowledge of how everything works. The funny part is the more human we are, the less we want to listen to those things because we want, oh, just give me the answer. Hurry up. I want to get back to what I was doing. And, and that's not how this works. This is a fully interactive experience where we have to be fully on board. we got to jump in with, with everything we've got, and we have to be completely dedicated and, and mm -hmm. committed because what we're investing in is ourself. What we're investing in is our entire existence here. And for a lot of people, it's not important enough yet. M True. Many don't understand, technically, it's the only reason they're on Earth. And for in the beginning, um, for a lot of us, and I speak a lot in the beginning, because for me, in the beginning was when we gained that new awareness and everything changed. And that occurs all along the way. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, um, we don't understand how things work, so we fight a lot. We, we, we have walls of resistance, and, and we don't like things to change. So um, <laughs> the reason I do what I do... Is because, what did you just say? <laughs> I said just be every time you say, and we don't like change, 
Mm-hmm. Like she is speaking to me. She's mm-hmm. underlyingly she's really scolding me. But yeah. So and right. there's no scolding here. And that's the beauty of this. See we return to who we were, who we are. But it's everything is beyond this existence in the beginning. And so, but what will happen is as you activate that version or that aspect of yourself energetically, all your memories come with that. So when your memories start to flood forth, it's overwhelming for our human aspect because we're like, oh, wait a minute, I must be losing my ever-loving mind. Mm -hmm. I've got to be going crazy. Um, When we start shifting dimensionally and there's an amnesia between the realms, we can't remember anything. Um, and, and we're like, oh, no, something's wrong with me. And we go back to the old ways of thinking and believing. And so part of the reason um, way showers, um, ascension guides, whatever words you want to use, because we all have different. It, it's funny because we couldn't care less about the titles. We use them. That's why mine's so long is because <laughs> I change it every day. Um, one mm-hmm. day I'm a, a quantum physicist from Atlantis uh, because the, I bring forth the the mm, biophysicist. Sorry, I bring forth ancient knowledge as a biophysicist. I bring forth galactic knowledge and rememberings and, and things here on how the genetic upgrades for the light body are going and how our DNA and consciousness um, changes. And that's what I share. I get up, I write on Facebook, I write for people all day long. I've written the two books. Um, We all have purposes in what we're to bring forth here. Mine just happens to be knowledge, how-tos, navigational tools, returning to mastery. Um, But the, the thing is that each person has to really want it, and each person has to see it as important in their world. And so... When they don't, then their universe says, okay, she's not serious yet. Let's, let, let's help her. Oh, yes. Just a little bit more. <laughs> that is so true. Oh, and my it gosh. it be fun. And it doesn't have to be harsh. But everybody does have to wake up. And the more masculine energy we have, the more of a survivor we were, the harsher the journey is because we're tough. And I was one of those that chose. Um, I was the epitome of a survivor, which meant everything had to come down because I had so many walls up and I was so stubborn. You can't break a survivor. They've survived everything. I have a hard time believing that. I have a hard time (laughs) believing that you were that that closed. Oh, no. Well, but you want to know what's funny is every one of us are absolutely beautiful beings. We we are beautiful and we're magnificent. We hold a lot of love. We want the best for people. We're good people. But the difference is when we start to wake up, that doesn't really matter because it's all coming up, and what comes up isn't beautiful at the time. Um, most don't understand, or a lot of people don't understand until they've gone through the experiences, is we wake up to lack of integrity, lack of honor, lack of love lack of unity. We wake up to our separation. We wake up to our impurities. That's what wakes us up. But because we're not aware of that's what's going on, we go into judgment and we start trying to push it back inside. We try to hide from it and we don't want people to see us. And we don't understand that being completely open and visible is required. We can't hide one thing. It's all got to go. And when we stand in judgment, we're the ones judging ourselves, and we create that to occur in our world. So it's more understanding. We actually step back into roles as creator again. Our memories come forth. I have my memories are I went back to before the creation of time. Um, I fell all over again. I experienced the fall of consciousness. And it's devastating when you go through all of that. Nothing's ever the same ever again. But I went back, uh, I've gone back, I say go back, but you re-experience it. It's an actual physical experience. So when you, um, if you were asleep, or for me, I was just sitting there consciously awake, and and I left energetically um, and had the experience all over again. And then I um, pretty much came back into my body, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and then the devastation set in all of the all of the everything um, of all of my existences culminated and came forth and I had to cry a lot of tears and I had to get angry um, because all of this is, is housed inside our physical body and it's got to come up so for what I do uh, I have created different navigational tools courses programs books to explain everything in, in in every way that's possible. The difference is, as humans, we don't want to do the work. We don't understand. We mm -hmm. have to go inside. We have to see those aspects of ourselves, and we have to stop judging them. And it, it, this isn't about anybody else. This is completely about us. And this is about the fact that when we see those things, we don't love ourselves. So it, it's coming to love ourselves fully again, Mm -hmm. And putting ourselves first, which goes against everything we were all taught. It was focused on the outside world. That's so true. this means completely flipping everything around and saying, you know what, not anymore. Now this is what I need for me. And what happens is as we start to put ourselves first, everything starts to change. And we reclaim our power again. And we go through this entire process. And as we do, we start coming forth um, to be in service and, and, and to assist others and to share and make a difference in the world. And it's a part of the process. Everybody here has an important purpose and mission and holds an, an unbelievable gifts. But they can't come forth if the heart's closed. The heart's got to be open. The mind's got to be open. Everybody's got to open up and share because every time we covet something, we shut down. Every time we go to fear, we shut down. Every time we get greedy, we shut down. And this isn't about anybody else. This is about standing in complete responsibility for absolutely everything. And we also don't understand it's a lot of saying no. Not in my world anymore. Not okay. And it means cutting off the old stuff. Nipping it in the bud. We always uh, open up for the opportunity for things to shift and change. But there are times that we have to actually make the choice and decide what we're going to accept and allow in our world because this is about our consciousness. And we're not in service when, when we lower, if you will, our consciousness and try to go back and meet an old way. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense to me. I'm totally... I'm totally understanding everything that you're saying. Cool. So, totally. do you have questions? I, I tried to, I tried to bargain with mm -hmm. my per se higher self. I was going to say the universe, my higher self. Same thing. <laughs> I tried to bargain, uh -huh. and um, I, I was like, you know, higher self, okay, universe. I was talking to the, I, I thought I was talking to the universe, but listen, how about I'm just very comfortable being. In my career, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's easy just staying right where I'm at, and you know, I don't have to meet people, and I don't have to deal with the world, and mm -hmm. you know, oh, and yeah, that doesn't work. I don't have to do <laughs> that. I can just stay to myself, and um, you know, people that want to, you know, get readings from me and learn about their soul. I mean, they could just come to me, you know, when they come to me. People that are open, they could just come to me, and I don't have to do anything. I don't have to set up a website, and I don't have to get out there, and I'll just yeah. keep my job. I'll keep. I'll continue to be an advanced practice nurse, and maybe I'll teach at the university too, part time. And you know, mm -hmm. I'm making good money, so I really don't need to. I don't really need to do anything else. You know, yeah. could y'all just let me do that and stop messing with me and mm -hmm. just let me that, do that? That worked out really well, didn't it? Change my path. I'm serious. I was so serious. I was like, can I just, can I just change my path? I mean, I you guys gave me free will. Can I just change my path? I heard this voice say very clearly no no we're not going to let you do it yeah. we're going to turn your world upside down just exactly yeah. what you said upside down we will yeah. turn your world upside down until you do what you're yeah. supposed to do and i believed it so i said you know what i gotta do something good for you well <laughs> i gotta do something this time. Too. you can't you can negotiate if you if you do it with honor and the reason I say that is because if you know you're going to have to do something, you can say, okay, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, I'm willing to do that. But can you get, and you can set parameters. It's pretty cool because when you really understand how everything works, you can play with things a bit. So I started setting up um, what I call markers for realities. 
And uh-huh. if those things occurred, those were my answers. And I did it with money. I did it with things I was supposed to do. I did it with everything because what ha- this is a program. This is a literal program of a hologram that has materialized into a physical world. So uh-huh. when you are in tune vibrationally and you are paying complete attention and you are listening and observing to everything, you can decipher your own program. And so I set up markers in order to bring me messages, and I just say totally present, conscious, and aware. And the moment of vibration changes. See, this is where people have problems, if you will. Not really because mm-hmm. there are problems, but I have to have some words to use here. Um, okay. Is that our new earth existence means that we are present in every moment. We are being a higher self. We don't talk to a higher self. We embody our higher self aspects, Mm -hmm. Yes. which means that we have to come from that place of integrity and purity in every moment and power. We don't compromise. (laughs) It is hard. And you know what? It's a lot of work because you're going to be constantly challenged in every moment to see if you're going to step up. This isn't about anybody else. And what you allow will affect your world. So you have to start choosing what you allow, what you don't allow, where you come from, what vibration you're you're transmitting out, what vibrations are going on around you. And what happens is our old fixed world isn't fixed, which means that in every moment, if you're constantly in tune, present, um, paying attention, very aware, making a choice, transmitting, a vibration intentionally. When you're standing as love, when you're standing as light and you're in your power, your your reality is completely different than one if you feel really small and you're in lack and you're waiting for things to happen to you. And so as we sleep, we upgrade in light. We integrate that light. We anchor the higher realms, if you will, the other dimensions in our physical world here. Our our mastery is us taking every energy, every frequency, every tone, every sound, every occurrence, everything that occurs, and then utilizing it, making a choice, and then saying, nope, this isn't in alignment, not okay. And, and we have to start tweaking, if you will, our realities. Mm-hmm. And they start to change in response to us. So this is about either being fully empowered and embodied as a master being and utilizing the energy of everything in every moment that it presents or waiting until something happens. Letting things happen until you've been pushed and you can't take it anymore. And there's some other things that it would take us forever to talk about, but we have to constantly challenge ourselves. Um, Because you either let your universe throw things at you constantly and push you to challenge you or you go, wow, I'm just going to have to constantly challenge myself in every moment to step up. And so what we do is we take the reins. And it's really cool when we do. But for a while, Mm -hmm. we don't know how to honor from the inside absolutely everything all the time. This is a journey of complete. I don't want to say difficult. It can be done, but that is, like you said, it does take work. It does take. It takes dedication. It takes commitment. And it takes um, not trying to continually go back to the old ways of safe. Um, It means letting go of all judgment. And it means remembering that that's why everybody is here. If everybody stood in their power and everybody came from that beautiful place of love inside, If everybody stood in responsibility and acted intentionally and contributed and and was considerate and, and, and realized that every moment they're making a difference, then everything would be different, right? That's true. Absolutely. And and so that the world would be a different place, a completely different world than it is right now. Yeah. Well, and now I'll go into some of the weirdness is that in your world or others' world, they're suffering immensely, while in others' world, it's 
absolutely magnificent because we've done the work. We don't compromise and we spend every day in service and transmitting frequencies intentionally. And our realities are a response to what we're transmitting out. We're consciously aware in every moment and we don't allow anything less. So one, um, especially for the way showers and those that have been doing this for a long time, if you will, being uh -huh. a gatekeeper. And for me, I just moved into, we all have purposes, roles, missions, into guardianship roles um, as an elder, bringing forth the ancient information as an elder and a crystal grid keeper. And so um, that means that I've completed, if you will, certain phases of the process myself. Um, mm -hmm. Because we all have to go through those initiations. We all have to go through those completions. We all have to go through these phases and processes um, while we embody light. And, and the embodiment of light means your whole reality changes. And it's, um, it, it's just going to depend on whether somebody's still trying to do it part-time or if they're really serious and making it a priority, because one thing we don't understand is that what we're investing in is ourselves. So every time I hear somebody say, oh, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, I listen to the excuses of how not important it is. And, wow. and that tells me a whole lot of stuff and what they've got to go through um, in order to get how serious or how important this is. This is our entire existence. So in one way, it's very intense. Um, that's what a lot of people are going through right now is the intensity of the upgrade process, the intensity of their world changing, the intensity of not being conscious before. Does that make sense? Yes. Makes so um, each dimension has a different physical reality. The more we hold light, the more dimensions we have access to in the physical. And for a while, we have to go to sleep to wake up, which is why a lot of people are sleeping so much. Um, and then once we've, quote, cleared that phase, if you will, then we walk consciously in multiple dimensions in the waking state. We have access to multiple parallel realities. We have access to uh, completely different universes. And it's funny because you can stand in a room with somebody um, that hasn't woken up yet, and it's like you live in two different universes. Um, there, there's The conversations are hilarious to listen to because there, there's like a gap in communication yes. because nobody can yeah, understand. Yeah, it's very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And so... Yes. Anyway, okay, Absolutely. so I'm going to let you ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're answering a lot of a lot of things, a lot yes. of questions that that I had. I mean, had. I'm doing my job. Yeah, that I didn't even I didn't even have to ask. <laughs> okay. So, so how how does everyone? How could you tell the audience how? Mm -hmm. Like you know, I do know that we all need to wake up. Yes. To remember. Yes. How. What is the advice that you can give to the audience to tell them how to do that? Because a lot of people are sleeping, Lisa. More mm -hmm. people are sleeping than they are awake. Right. The world is not filled with a bunch of conscious people. That I've, as much as I want to believe that, it really isn't. Well, it depends. Um, but it is. The difference is, um, are you connected with them? The difference is, is, is and I'm just going to speak um, in a, in a, way that uh, addresses the questions, okay? Um, mm -hmm. In my world, everybody's conscious. Right. I don't have unconscious people in my world. Um, and, and it depends on what you allow in your world and what, um, if, if you expect when you wake up that everybody's unconscious, then that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get. That's true. If you think that others don't get it, if you think that others are judging you, then you're the one that shut down. So it's more about opening our minds and actually seeking out, if you will, um, that which is conscious and, in order to bring it further into our world. Um, and mm -hmm. 
one, when we open up, when we start to share, and this is a big one because sharing is not the human way. Um, as humans, we separated off as the individual being. And we went totally unconscious. I say totally. Some people didn't totally go unconscious, and others did. I was uh -huh. one that did. Okay. Um, but what happens is when we separated off into individual humans, then we had our own individual human experience. Um, right. But what, what happens is when it's time to wake up, it's time to leave that individual experience behind. It's time to let it go. It doesn't matter anymore. It's time to... Um, for some, they'll go through forgiveness. For others, we just completely bypass the forgiveness phase. Uh, for me, I tried forgiveness. It didn't work um, because it was part of the dualistic system of right and wrong, good or bad. Somebody did this to somebody else. And mm -hmm. so I move, I, we, we all move on beyond forgiveness to understand that everything served a purpose. Everything was a contract as a soul for an experience that we chose to have here, and we start to let it go. The details go. The stories go. Um, it doesn't matter anymore because we start realizing the more present you are, the more you realize that all those other moments are not real anymore. They're a thought or a memory. And we carry the story forward and we bring it into this present moment. We keep recreating it and spinning in a circle and going round and round and it's a prison. And so we just go through our entire existence and we start releasing. We let it go. We don't care. Um, it doesn't serve a purpose except to show us something. We learn from it. We have understandings about it that expand beyond the old ways of dualistic thinking, if you will. And we take all of our experiences and we turn them into purposes. And then we use them to help others. We start seeing the beauty uh, of what we learned or how we transcended that and we share the story and that touches somebody else going through that same exact thing and struggling with that. And they're like, wow, thank you. I needed to hear that. That really helped me. Uh -huh. And so our experiences become um, tools to assist and guide and help others. And so for those of us that chose extreme experiences like I did, then I was able to assist and guide with everything extreme because I experienced it. Because the one thing about experience is that it removes the judgment. That's true. You can't That's judge true. another if you did it. You did it. That's right. And I did everything, which means you that I can't like judge sister. anybody. <laughs> <laughs> my sister. Like, That's why she's so nonjudgmental because she did it all. <laughs> well, and you know what? But. Let's look at it this way. Let's flip it around. You've got the human looking at that person going, look at what they did, passing judgment. Mm -hmm. Where is So it, it's really important to understand that our mentalities really dictate our physical realities and what, we're, what we experience here. And so you start challenging your mentalities. Why do I believe that? Where did I hear that? Who told me that? And then you start to realize that all the things you believe Humans. Technically, aren't true. Yeah. I came mean, you realize what we are. I said they came from humans. This came from a human self. Well, and they came from another limited perspective, based upon the standpoint or the understanding that that person had. Their perspectives, like you said. The difference, and when I started understanding, even when I read a book even when it was a book of knowledge, that it was somebody's perception. I went, wow, why would I limit myself to that? And then I started deciding what I wanted to believe, and that's, that's key. There are certain key codes, um, if you will, that are built into each experience and how things work here. And part of my job, if you will, is to share key codes and activations that activate everybody to a higher consciousness uh, of, than they had before. And so that's why I speak the way I speak. I speak in tones and frequencies, and every word I say is an activation of something. It speaks to different multiple dimensional aspects and versions. It activates what, what somebody holds inside. They'll feel what I say, but it might not make I do. sense. Yes. And I totally so, do. 
Yeah, but it does make sense, just not in the old logical way. That's because what I activate, if you will, is the knowledge we already hold, that which we already know, but yet it doesn't conform to the old human ways. And that's how this is. Um, we're all to wake up, um, focus our energy, be productive, support each other. And you asked me earlier, what can somebody do? Well, one, they have to really want it. They have to commit. They have to choose. They have to dedicate. They have to use the resources. I mean, it doesn't really matter because if you're holding back, you're holding back on you. So mm -hmm. when you start to understand that everything you do is affecting your reality and your experience here, we start to change what we do. Um, one thing is to quit worrying about everybody else and what everybody else is doing, what everybody else is thinking. It doesn't matter. You're right. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> <laughs> it was all of us um, at some point in time. Um, for me, I had to say, you know what, don't worry about everybody else. Get up and do it, Lisa. And that's how the way shower, that's the way shower energy. We quit worrying about everybody else. We just go do it. And everybody will go, well, wait a minute, wait for me. And we're like, nope. I'll be over here getting it done. If you want to be here, you come join me. Because what <laughs> happens is as long as we're sitting around waiting for everybody else, nobody's getting it done. That's true. So we step up. And that's our divine masculine. We step up. Divine masculine is our doing energy. And a lot of people have just gone through the resurrection phase. When I went through it a few years ago, it was that I was to start showing people how to do this in the physical reality, how to embody and hold it here and how to anchor the higher dimensions in. So part of my purpose and roles, we all have our own and they evolve as we grow. They evolve as we hold light. The next purpose or mission will come forth and it's constantly changing. Um, in the beginning, we just say, whatever I'm doing right now is my purpose. Right now, this is what's most important. And we get focused in the moment. Uh -huh. And sometimes our most important thing we'll do is go to sleep because when we sleep, we wake up. Our body relaxes. The grid work for all the dimensions are held in our bones and our muscles and our teeth, in our skin, in our organs. Um, our body holds everything inside of it. So as we go through this upgrade process, this is why everybody's physical body is going through such a harsh time is because they're going through a, com a complete overhaul of their physical world and physical body systems. Um, physical bodies don't function here the way that they did. They have crystals in them. Star particles activate. It's bizarre and weird. And mm -hmm. the body will go sideways when it's trying to purify, detox, and cleanse. And if we're human, we go, oh, no, something's wrong, and we start getting all up in it, and we start to interfere. Instead of going, oh, wow, I'm upgrading, my body's cleansing, it's purifying, it's detoxing, it's time trying to release those old programs and thoughts because everything mm -hmm. is inside the body. So understanding that it's got to get out somehow, the body's going to go into a rapid release of something and where mm, an emotion, uh, a release of an emotion is a release of an energy of some kind, anger, fear. Uh, it's got to have a physical release. But where we don't understand it, we try to fix it or push it back in, not understanding the body is intelligent itself. If we'll just listen to it, it tells us what it needs. It tells us what to feed it. It tells us to go to sleep. It tells us, I'm not happy right now. I need to get out in nature. I need sunshine. The body will, it is intelligent. It's actually smarter than we are as a human. But we don't give it the credit, the love, the nurturing, the respect. And that's why so many people are having a rough time is they don't respect or love their bodies. And they don't understand that their body true. is their vessel. That's very true. It's huge. And the that's body true. holds all of our lack. So if we start to understand and change, this is a complete change of our existence and how we function. Um, it's a process. And it doesn't occur overnight. And so the one who wants the quick fix is going to have an experience to show them that's not how it works. The one that has multiple opportunities to wake up 
but didn't want to listen is going to have another opportunity that's not going to be as kind. I mean, they're, they're everything. I've had those <laughs> at my share. <laughs> well, and as we wow. tune in energetically to all of these things and we start to understand, basically it's how the universe works. As we become the universe, we understand how the universe works. We are the creator of our universe. And when you connect with that aspect of yourself inside, all your memories return on how everything is. And your abilities uh, return too, your gifts. And we are to share them with everybody and everything uh, according to what we see and how. And so it, it's it's a very different process, if you will, but our, exi our existence is very different, too. Um, we exist energetically, and so we tune. Um, we function vibrationally, so depending on the vibration um, that's present in the moment will determine what we do. So if I'm standing with somebody and their heart closes down, I feel it because we become the unified field. And so anything that shifts affects that field of consciousness, and we're super conscious. We're not just conscious anymore, as we were in the old days when we just opened our heart and we walked around consciously, if you will, I call it um, unconsciously conscious, uh, because we don't know we're asleep. And those around us um, that are judging, one, if you can stand in judgment, you're asleep. That's right. Two... If you're not conscious of yourself and everything around you, you're the one unconscious. So it's more putting things in perspective and basically paying attention to ourselves and getting out of everybody else's business and taking responsibility and stepping up um, and sleeping to upgrade. Because when you sleep to integrate light, your body will upgrade itself. Your physical realities will start to change for you. Uh, because, and I can go into the quantum physics aspects of all of this too, uh, but I won't, because that's also the knowledge we bring forth. We see everything in particle matter and, and quantum physics, and that's our, our language. That's how we speak. That's how we see. That's how we exist. Um, it's kind of cool in a very bizarre, weird way, because what I did as a human um basically is nothing like my existence now. They couldn't be more opposite, if you will. Um, so if you try to guess what you're going to be doing, you can't even, you can't conceive it. It's going to be so far beyond your comprehension. But the biggest thing is to get involved and actually take it serious and commit yourself and, and start doing whatever it takes and to start to command your reality from the inside out. And it's it's a very powerful place to be, and we have to love ourselves again. The, I, I watch daily, and I see how many, and all of us, how we, we lost our beauty. We forgot who we were. And that essence, that purity, when it comes forth, it's very simple here. And we're here to exist and energetically in full remembrance. Um, and let go of all the old ways. But so many people can't see how beautiful they are. They can't see what we see. Because when we see someone, we see their beauty. We see their magnificence. We see what they have to offer. We see their limits and where they shortchange themselves and where they're not open and they're still in lack. We see everything. Uh, the difference is we're not allowed to interfere in another person's reality. Um, we can try to open Minds, hearts, doors, but we're not allowed to impose. We, that's the part of free will. And when I speak, I speak as we, because I speak as the collective consciousness of the higher realms, fully remembered. And, and this is who I am. And all that come to do this will do the same thing, too, because we is a vibration that we come back to as we emerge on new earth. And... Mm -hmm. And we evolve back into light again. It's a collective consciousness that comes from this beautiful place of love. And we don't have the capacity of the old ways anymore. We've cleared the karma. We've cleared all of the old stuff. 
we've worked through it all within ourselves and we're in service fully with everything that we do and every breath. Um, and that's uh, seems quite intense, but it kind of is. Um, but it's also being very responsible and dedicated and contributing um, to bringing everybody else into this higher state of consciousness that's ready to. And for those who are not ready, we understand that they require more proof. They require more to get their attention. They require more because they don't want to listen and they're not ready yet. And that's what's happening around the world. Mm-hmm. That's Basically, what I'm seeing a lot of. Yes. I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm, I'm, but I've been pretty blessed. Like there's, there's been so many lives that I've been around that mm-hmm. were people were asleep and I've helped to, you know, just being around them, they woke up. Yes. And, and it will. And, because but then there's need- some that just absolutely, they're just, it, it, I don't think it's it's just meant. I don't want to say it's not meant for them in this lifetime. I just don't think they will, not in this lifetime. Well, and one thing that I, I will say that's really cool is that when we shift vibrationally and we clear that program within ourselves, you'll be surprised when you go back around to see you might have a different version because you've got to remember everything in your reality is your transmission. Okay. So, yes, that might be true. But it also may not, because um, if you give it enough time, you, you want to remember that when you go into an exchange, you believe that that person is the same version of the person they were the time before. Mm-hmm. Which means that you have brought forth the version of that person and that aspect, and you're expecting that one to be there, which is that's the one you're going to get. Okay. For me... I don't expect anything. I always expect the highest state of consciousness. I always expect the most awesome experience. I always expect brilliance and and magic and amazingness, and I pay attention, and I'm totally open. I raise my vibration. I stay conscious. I stay aware because if we each did that, then our exchanges would be completely different. When I walk in, I check to see which version of the person I have because I can see inversions. Mm -hmm. So when I go, I'm just saying I, for Mm -hmm. the practice, if you will, when I enter into a room, I'm aware and I pay attention to the vibration and the version of that person that's standing before me based upon what they're transmitting out. I pay attention to the transmission, the vibration, the tones, the words, the sounds, the feelings, and all of those things. And that tells me which version I have. You can have one that if their heart is closed, it will cause the other person to shut, to shut down. So the challenge in that moment is to rise up and open up further so that they feel safe in opening up too. I can understand that. If we respond to a closed person by shutting down, then then we're both doing the same thing. So this this is an entire journey of mastering everything. We master ourselves. We master our experiences. We master our exchanges. We master everything. And you can set forth the reality before you even get there. You can go in to a higher state of consciousness. You can create a reality to occur in advance kind of cool if you start playing with it it's a whole lot of fun i gotta learn how to do that (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome thank you so much lisa that was really wonderful any final words of wisdom to give to the audience um as to stepping into their purpose well i would have to say embrace you Make you the most important thing there is. Take your money, take your energy, take your time, and invest it in you. Because when you do, uh, when you start to love you, um, your whole world will start to change. Uh, Let go of the judgment. um, Observe yourself and see what's going on with you. And then make a decision. We have to make a commitment. When we're not committed, realities are occurring for us. Because committed just means focusing our energy, being intentional with our actions and the things that we do. Because a lot of people don't understand 
that their abundance is their energy. Their energy is what matters here. And, and the human aspect will waste time, waste thought, waste energy, waste. And when they do, it's a lack energy creating lack in our world. So what we do is we focus on ourselves and our own energy and our light quotient and our vibration. And, and when we do that, everything turns around. So I would have to say make you a priority and make a commitment to you and then do whatever it takes um, because your universe will go, wow, she's finally serious. Thank you. Okay, now let's support her or him. I believe now that. let's start bringing her what she needs. She's finally getting it. She's really dedicated now. When we turn it around, everything turns around. But it's our focus. It's our commitment. And it's what we're doing. Our universe is us. It knows what we're up to. You can't trick it. You That's can't. True. It knows what you're going to do before you do it because our higher self is us in another vibrational frequency and another reality that's already occurred. So it's technically standing, if you will, in your future watching you and kind of laughing, going, <laughs> yeah, let's watch her do this one more time. Your highest version of yourself. It is. I do understand that. But you, but you want to broke it cool down thing? so nicely for the audience. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Say that again. You want to know the cool thing? Is that when you're present in the moment and your heart is wide open, when your mind is wide open and you're being love, when you're being your truth, when you're fully expanded, you are your higher self. There's no separation anymore. So all these people trying to connect with a higher self out there, when we realize it's all inside, then we just open up and we connect to that sacred place inside of us, that, that, that source inside of ourselves, and we utilize the outside world to support that. We get out in nature. We, we, because this is about a feeling. You have to hold that feeling long enough for your reality to change. And a lot of people fear the feelings or judge the feelings, and they won't let themselves feel. And this is a feeling reality, but it's one of magic and bliss and awesomeness without the old stuff anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. So I would Thank say that, make a commitment to yourself. So many won't. And so when you make a choice, um, everything starts to change. And thank you, Tracy. Thank you so much for that. Mm. Okay, Lisa. I know you have a gift you want to share with the audience today. I do. There's a link, There's a link to it in the email. Can you go ahead and share a little bit about what it is and what it's all about? Well, this is going to be a three-part. It's three three activations, so one, two, and three, uh, light body and Merkaba um, activation. And what it does is it, it brings us inside as the universe again. And I've had many people have many different experiences. And one thing we want to understand is when we go inside, then it's going to trigger everything that's unresolved to come up too. So these will trigger separation while helping us unify to a higher vibration. And bring us back to peace. Bring us back to love. Because this is about coming back. We're not going anywhere. We're returning um, to mm -hmm. a higher vibrational consciousness of everything that we forgot. So this assists with the awakening process and the remembering process and the activation of the light body further. Because everybody has technically kind of already activated their light body. They just might not be aware that that's what that is. Um, so... Um, this is one of my expertises, if you will, in the ancient knowledge that I bring forth is the light body, um, the human stargate, the um, all kinds of things. But this will activate and help with that integration process. And I tell people go to sleep. A lot of people will do these and sleep. So this is the light body activation um, in mm -hmm. three parts. And the more you do it, the more it will assist, but it can get a bit intense. So you want to kind of take it easy um, if if you're just starting out, because what I do is quantum, which means it goes right straight to the source. Um, it's not like a meditation, but it is, because a meditation will lead you to things, whereas this will take you kind of inside through a little holographic journey, because all of mine are, are basically holographic journeys, so just some are short and some are long. 
Um, this mm -hmm. one specifically is geared towards activating your light body and bringing you understanding and assisting with activating that within your consciousness for you easier so that you can go through that, that embodiment process um, quicker, if you will. And so the light body activation is one that's been a favorite through the years and very pivotal for many uh, journeys along the way. So it felt very appropriate to offer it as a gift for, for your listeners and everybody here um, just because of the amount of power that it brings and, and, and assisting with that, that process that everybody's going through right now. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'd like to thank you all for joining us and thank you, Lisa, for joining me. Hello. My name is Tracy Alabre and I was your host for the Shine Your Light Summit. Tomorrow in your inboxes at 7 a.m., you're going to find your next interview waiting for you. Can't wait to have you all join us again. See you then.